Hi there. So in this Curve 2 pro tip video, I'm going to show you how to use the uh, loop or sustain phase of an envelope as a sequencer. Um, the cool thing about this is it allows you uh, to control the speed of the sequence completely fluidly um, all the way up to audio rate, which creates some really, really interesting effects. And it's not really so practical to use um, in the midst of a tune for the most part, except uh, during breakdowns or to create in kind of really incredible uh, you're catching um, kind of modulated effects that that can really kind of take over a breakdown or a buildup or something like that. Um, I've done stuff like this in the past using analog sequencers and, and analog synths, and it's uh, incredibly easy to do in that sense, but uh, the implementation of it in this synth is wonderful, and it makes it something that's, that's easy and fun to do. So... To start with, I'll let you hear um, a simple patch that I've got here. It's just uh, two waveforms going through a low-pass filter, and there's there's no real modulation going on at all. So uh, here we go. So very simple. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, two envelopes. The first one I'm just going to use for illustration purposes, and the second envelope uh, I'm, I've actually got a sequence set up in already, and um, once I've explained what's going on with the first envelope, I'll, we'll, we'll switch over to that. Uh, envelope one here is um, a, a traditional ADSR, except the sustain area is actually called uh, loop. Now, when you think about it, all sustain is a loop. Um, it uh, So long as the key is depressed, the loop will essentially keep on going infinitely. Now, for the most part, um, for most synthesizers, the the sustain section or the loop section is simply a held value because it's usually just a four-stage envelope. Um, but with Curve 2, you can draw in different envelope points. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to eliminate the attack and decay phase by taking them to zero. And I'm going to take envelope one and I'm going to apply it to pitch. So right now, if I press play, we're really not going to hear much of a difference. This this envelope, um, this loop section of the envelope is still just uh, functioning as a kind of an on off um, with one held value. But when I start adding in some kind of control points to the waveform, we're going to start hearing uh, some some very serious kind of differences. This is just going to create kind of like a. a a wobbly effect on the pitch and it's going to just kind of jump up and down a little bit. So cool. That's essentially what we're going to do using envelope two, except we're going to apply envelope two to a few more things and we're going to uh, have it sweep up to audio rate. So um, when I switch over to envelope two, you'll see a sequence that I've already created here. Um, this is uh, just going to be a, a very simple kind of acidy sequence, and I'm going to take it and I'm going to apply it to pitch after removing envelope one. So now it is controlling the oscillators 100%. I'm also going to apply it to uh, FM on oscillator one just a little bit, and I'm going to apply it to the cutoff of filter one a fair amount. And now when I press play, um, we're going to hear this sequence function or this sequence repeat over and over. Now. Just to, to give you a little bit of a heads up, what I've done in advance is I've deliberately set the length of the loop to represent the length of one bar at 120 BPM. So that in this case is 2.05 seconds. It's pretty easy to do um, just by pressing play and kind of sweeping the loop point until you find it um, repeat perfectly. So let's hear what this sounds like. <laughs> So that sounds pretty cool. Um, that again is the sustain phase uh, or the loop phase of envelope two that is controlling all of those things. Now, where this becomes really fun to play around with is when you start mapping macros to control the length of the loop. So in this case, when I, you, you press this little magnifying glass here, it brings up your, your macro assignments. And what I've done is I've taken macro three and I've applied it to control the length of the loop. And it's working at a negative value, which means that as I turn the knob um, clockwise, it's actually going to turn the loop value counterclockwise, decreasing um, the length of the loop and increasing the, uh, the uh, frequency of the loop. Now, when I move macro three 
um, and start increasing the tempo of the loop, it's going to simply start sounding like the sequence is getting faster, but there's actually going to hit a certain point where the cycle of the sequence passes into audio rate. And at that point, the fact that it's a sequence of notes will no longer really become audible. Uh, it will take on its own pitched quality and there will be kind of like a zipper effect. Um, and of course, as, as that increases in frequency, uh, it will increase the pitch of this audio rate effect. So. <laughs> So that sounds awesome. I, uh, I'm a huge fan of audio rate effects, especially when you can get something to jump through this wide a range of frequencies because it, it goes from a control rate or a, a kind of low frequency um, modulation effect all the way up into this um, kind of FME uh, audio rate modulation. So yeah, I um, hope you dug this video and uh, definitely play around with uh, some of these settings in Curve 2. It's, it's uh, super, super fun, and I'm sure you'll get some really cool results out of it. Uh, great synth to experiment with. So uh, thanks a lot, and uh, definitely uh, subscribe my channel if uh, you dig these pro tips. Um, and uh, yeah, happy, uh, happy music making. <laughs>